say so. Yes, we are thankful that we are redeemed. We are thankful that we have a God who is very much alive and is very real. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another evangelistic service. We thank God for always meeting with his people. And for the online viewers, we thank you for joining in with us. And we pray that something that is said here this evening will lift your soul. And if there is any that is out of Christ, will find the Lord our God, their personal Savior. Before we go any further, and since we've been having such a wonderful time in singing, I'm going to ask you once again all to stand because we can do absolutely nothing successfully unless the Lord bless it and anoint it. So at this time, I'm going to call Brother Lenny to come and do the opening prayer for us, please. Let us pray. Most gracious, eternal Father, Father God, as we come before thee this evening, giving thee thanks for your love, your kindness, and your mercy towards us, Father God, for bringing us safely through the day. Father God, we thank thee for the services we had during the day. We thank thee for the blessing that we receive. And Father God, we come for nothing less tonight than a blessing. Father God, we know that you're able to do what we ask of you and even beyond what we ask of you. We thank thee for each and every one that is here tonight. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be there. So we know that you're in our midst, Father God. Father God, we pray and we ask that you bless all that will be said and done tonight. Each and every special that will sing their Lord. Father God, the musician, we ask that you will bless them. The chairperson, Stakati, she conduct the service. We ask that you will bless her, Father God, the choir as they sing. Help it to be for your honor and your glory there, God, and that souls may be blessed. Remember the one that will bring your word tonight, Father God. We pray and we ask that you will anoint him afresh, dear Lord. Give him a word, dear Lord, that will convict souls, dear Lord, and souls there that do not know thee, that they may make that choice to make you their Lord and Savior. Father God, we just ask you that you will have your way and you will bless this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Lenny, for that. I'm going to have the congregation now sing from their redemption, the little red book, and Sister Fifi will also have it on the screen. Um, number 99, yes? What can wash away my stains? Number 99, out of our redemption, nothing but the blood of Jesus.
what a blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And what power that blood has in it, yes? Only if you understand the riches of God and the blood that was shed for us, can you understand that the blood of Jesus was shed for our remission of sin, yes? At this time, I'll have Sister Vida to do our scripture reading, which is taken from the hymnal. Uh, it's number 61 in the back. I don't have a page. Number 61. 479. Yes. Good night, church. Number 61, a test of righteousness. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was as hunger, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was, a, I was a stranger, and ye took me not in, naked, and ye clothed me not, sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily, I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me altogether. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteousness in the Eternal. May the Lord continue to bless the reading of his holy words. Amen. Our next song is number 430 out of our church hymnal. We're going to ask you all to stand for this one, the church's jubilee. Let us all stand, number 430 out of our church hymnal. The light of eventide now shines in darkness to dispel the glories of fair science. They ten thousand voices tell for all the people God does fall his
What a day that will be. Yes. We will start our special singing, yes. We're going to start with a, a group song, The Ministry of Paul, and then Brother Shaw will come up after. A group song. Ministry of Paul.
of a friend, a precious friend. Oh, how he loves me. He says his love will never end. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. I know not why I only cry. Oh, how he loves me. Why he should come, I cannot tell. Oh, how he loves me in my poor broken heart to dwell. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. I know not why I only cry. Oh, how he loves me. He died to save my soul from death. Oh, how he loves me. I'll praise him while he gives me bread. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. I know not why I only cry. Oh, how. He loves me, he walks with me along life's road, oh how he loves me, he carries a heavy load, oh how he loves me, oh how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me, I know not why, I only cry, oh, how he loves me, he has a home prepared for me, oh, how he loves me, with him I spend eternity. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves me. I know not why I only cry. How he loves me. I want to thank, thank the group for that song, Paul's ministry, and let it be said of you that God can count on you. Yes? And in doing that, you can say, oh, yes, he loves me. Praise God. At this point in time, we'll have Sister Jenny to do her solo. And uh, after that, we'll have Sister Mayfern. Yes? Sister Mayfern? Yes.
But any mountains you can turn it through. God specializes in the things not impossible. He does the things others cannot do. Give the Lord thanks for being here tonight. Thank him for his goodness and mercies towards me. I want to sing the song for the honor and the glory of God. Last time I came up here to sing, I had to talk the song, so I hope it do happen tonight by the grace of God. I was lost in sin, dark prison, not knowing no way out. Every time I try escape, my mind was filled with doubts and the tears that cover my eyes. I pray, Lord, just let me see. Then God took away those scars that the world had left on me. He took away the chains of sin that bound me for so long. He took away all my heartaches. He gave me peace and he made me strong. Then he took away the darkness. He gave me light that I could see. Yes, God took away those scars that the world had left on me. Now I have a reason for living. Oh, freedom is mine to keep. I will praise his name forever. For all the things he done for me, I am made a brand new person. From sin I've been set free. Yes, God took away those scars that the world had left on me. He took away the chains of sin. That bound me for so long He took away all my heartaches He gave me peace and he made me strong Then he took away the darkness He gave me light that I could see Yes, God took away those scars that the world had left on me. Now I have a reason for living. Oh, freedom is mine to keep. I will praise his name forever for all the things he done for me. I am now a brand new person. From sin I've been set free Yes, God took away those scars That the world had left on me He took away the chains of sin That bound me for so long He took away all my heartaches he gave me peace and he made me strong. Yes, he took away the darkness. He gave me light that I could see. Yes, God took away those scars that 
that the world had left on me. Yes, God took away those scars that the world had left on me. Okay, thanks, Sister Jenny and Sister Mayfern. Sister Mayfern, just remember that a lot of songs started by poems and writing and then they were then converted into music. So there's nothing wrong with you talking <laughs> through your song. <laughs> Once you get the message across. Yes? Um, this coming week, uh, it's a pray and pray service. Yes? And uh, we do have prayer meeting this coming Saturday. Last week we did not. So it's 5.30 sharp. Come out and pray, yes. That's the core of the church, to communicate with God collectively. We are one or two touching anything. He promised he will be with us. Yes, so we want to see this lovely audience once again. Um, 5.30 Saturday evening or even more. Yes. And on Sunday morning at 9.45, Sunday school preliminary begins. And... The morning service, worship service, starts at 11, and we have a special coming up this Sunday, next Sunday um, night. There will be a inspiration, so invite a friend, invite the neighborhood, and come out and have a wonderful time praising God and listening to some wonderful gospel songs, yes, to enjoy yourself, because we know we like to hear the singing, and we like to join in the singing. So come on out and enjoy this inspiration for next week's Sunday. At this point in time, do I have anyone on my left and your right for any prayer requests? Okay. Okay. Anyone else? No? And Sister Carstine, yes. All right. To my right, your left. Okay. And all prayers are noted. Even if we do not remember them one by one, God knows. Unspoken choir? Unspoken? Okay, any from, any via the internet? Sister Wilma. All right, I'm going to invite you all to stand, and I'm going to impose on Sister Karen Christian to come and do the prayer for me, please. Let us pray. Our kind Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we come to you, Lord, acknowledging the need of your help, Lord. Lord, nothing, we can do nothing without you, Lord. We thank you for the song service thus far has been very uplifting, Lord. Your Holy Spirit has met with us, Lord. Lord, you know every need before we even ask, Lord. Lord, there's so many that are mourning the loss of their loved ones. There are so many that are sick and on their bed of afflictions, Lord. But we bring them all before you, Lord. You said, put them at the foot of the cross and you leave them there, Lord. Help us, Lord, to continue to remember, to acknowledge you for all that you do for us, Lord God. Lord, as the man per person come to speak, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to lay, give him, Lord, what you have laid on his heart to us, Lord. Help us to be attentive to the message that you're going to provide us with tonight, Lord. Lord, we just want to honor and praise you, Lord, for you have been meeting with us, Lord, so frequently, Lord. We just want to praise you and thank you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and all of the things that we need will be added unto us, Lord. Lord, we just want to honor and praise you now. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
just want to make it known that we're thankful for every um, fund or offering that is been brought into our church. We do collect offering, but they are dropped in the boxes at the front door and the two side wings, and we give God thanks for jobs, and we give God thanks that we have a clear conscience that we can give back to God what he has provided for us, yes? Nothing that we have belongs to us in it. We are just custodians to what God has provided us with. And we just want to thank him and we want to praise him for all his provision. Yes? At this time, we'll have Brother Leroy Daly to do a special for us. And then the choir will do their portion Let my life be a light. Brother Leroy Daly. So we thank God for being here tonight. Thank you for his blessing and his love. You know, this morning I was meditating and this song comes to my mind. It's a pretty well-known song. You know, many of us got mountains going through each day of our life. And, you know... We are to be encouraged that God is always there. God is always there to, to carry you over the mountain, no matter how rough it may be, no matter how high. You might get a small mountain, I may may get a tall mountain, but God is able. You know, and the God on the mountain is still God in the good time. Life is easy. When you're up on the mountain And you've got peace of mind Like you never know But it's down in the valley I've got trials and temptations Don't lose faith for We are never For the God on the mountain is the God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good time is the God in the bad time. The God of the day. God in the night, we talk of faith when we are up on the mountain, but the task comes so easy when life at its best, but it's down in the valley. I've got trials and temptations Don't lose faith for We are never alone For the God on the mountain He's still God in the valley When things go wrong He'll make them right God of the day is still God in the night. For the God on the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good time in the bad time the God of the day is still God in the night the God of the day is still God in the
thank Brother Leroy for that wonderful song and for the choir, Let My Life Be a Light. In a world that is so dark with so many negativity, we do need some light. And if the church light isn't shining, it's going to be a very dark world for everyone. So each and every one of us have a part to play. Let your light shine. Yes? That others can see your good work and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Now, for the core of this meeting, we have Brother Ray Hyde to bring the message that God has laid on his heart. So be receptive, be supportive, and give him your amen, yes? And let us hear what Brother Ray have to say to us tonight. What would I do without Jesus, the shepherd of my valley? Lord, I just couldn't walk this road alone. When I'm hungry, he feeds me. When I'm thirsty, he's my water. I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do when I need someone to talk to? He's always there to listen when I. Without me, he rocks me in his bosom. What would I do without Jesus, the shepherd of my valley? I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do? When my tears flow like a river And my burdens are high as mountains And when the ones I've counted on Have let me down That's when I go to Jesus He's the one that I can count on. I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do when I need someone to talk to? He's always there to listen. When arms fall without me, he rocks me in his bosom. What would I do without Jesus, the shepherd of my valley? I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do? When my tears flow like a river And my burdens are high as mountains And when the ones I've counted on Have let me down That's when I go to Jesus He's the one that I can count on. I couldn't make it without Jesus. What would I do when I need someone to talk to? He's always there to listen when arms fall. Wraps me in his 
Jesus, what would I do? Praise the Lord. What a truth in song. I don't know about you, but I couldn't make it without Jesus. None of us, huh? What would we do? What a question. What would we do without Jesus, the shepherd of our valley? Tell you. In days when you feel down and out, we can always count and call on Jesus. And we thank God, and we thank God for our, our friend that sticketh closer than our brother. He's always there. What a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. Praise the Lord. For your Bibles, please turn with me to St. John, the sixth chapter. Last Sunday night I asked a question. If or if we're sure our name was written in the Lamb Book of Life. Tonight I want to talk about how our soul is fed. We thank Brother James for such a timely, lovely message this morning. Beautiful message, encouraging us. But I want us to think of our eternity bound soul and the only one soul we do have, how are we taking care of it? How are we feeding it? How are we treating it? John 6, start with verse 30, please, down to 35. They said, therefore, unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see? Sorry, St. John chapter 6, we start at verse 30, down to verse 35. Then said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then, that we may see and believe thee? What does thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. You know, love Jesus, he always has an answer. And he answers so nicely, politely. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, Verily I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, everyone, Lord, even more, give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me, he, he that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus had an answer for all of those. He knew he was question, they were questioning him of who was providing the bread. Who was providing for them. He said everything that they have, that we have, and that I have, came from my father, came from God. But at the end he said, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst again. So if we stop and think about our souls being fed, Jesus Christ is the bread of life. So if you have Jesus, you have everything. We need, we're in need of nothing else when we have Jesus Christ. We have a tendency to seek after the wrong things for, fil- for fulfillment. We have a tendency to think after or seek after things that really don't gratify. We have a tendency to seek after the things that really don't, doesn't matter to the soul. But we have, what we have to do is seek after, seek after Jesus Christ. For he is the bread of life. And I must tell you, I must tell you, the, the, the more we hear of the, of the humdrum and the way the world is going, I, I was looking through something just yesterday, 
And, and my goodness, there were as many funerals as, as there were birthday wishes we have up here. It, it's amazing how, how life is just, just going away. But, but the fact is that we've got to seek after Jesus Christ. I asked a question last Sunday night, and I'm going to ask it again tonight. Let's make sure that our election is sure. And how do we do that? Seek after Jesus Christ. He's the only thing that fulfills, Sister Rhonda. He's the only thing that satisfies. Thank God for that. Thank God for the satisfaction that we get out of Jesus Christ or from Jesus Christ. Thank God for salvation. Bread of life. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. What do you want most out of life? Where do you invest the majority of your time and energy and seek gratification? A lot of us do different many things. Every one of us is different. I thank God for that. I thank God that we're all different. Uh, and we seek different gratification for different things. What's, what, what, what gratifies you might gratify me. But as Christians, we need to seek after Jesus Christ more. Because that's the only thing that fulfills. That's the only lasting satisfaction we have. is Jesus Christ. We all crave something or another. It may be fame, fortune, love or acceptance. Deep down, we desire to be known, seen, and heard. And we make it our aim and business to obtain the things we want, hoping they can fulfill us. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with aspiring to do more in life and to do better in life. But along, along this way, our aspirations should always include Jesus Christ. Because no matter what we gain in life with material things, they're not going to last. So we have to include Jesus Christ all along the way because he's the only thing that will last. And at the end of the day, he's the only thing that satisfies. I talked about it last Sunday night, that, that that new car is nice for about six months. In the old days, the new car was good for about five years, but that is that right? But, but nowadays, nothing seems to, to, to satisfy or last. At the root of all we desire is the only one who could bring us peace and rest. In fact, Jesus remarked multiple times that in him we find great peace. Fame and fortune are nothing apart from Jesus Christ. Status and a, a Status and acclaim are empty without him. Accomplishments don't satisfy and compliments are hollowed for a while. But Jesus Christ lasts. Praise the Lord. Ultimately, our hearts aren't set on any of the things we chase, but rather on fulfillment. Jesus called himself the bread of life. So the bread of life fulfills. Praise the Lord. And only Jesus Christ can fulfill. Nothing else. He is more than salvation for our souls. He's more than a teacher. He's a daily nourishment for all of us. The only one who could satisfy our hunger is Jesus. The next time you're feeling unfilled in life, Recognize your soul's desire. So our soul's desire can only be fulfilled and filled with Christ and be satisfied by Christ. So henceforth, when we don't seek after Christ, our souls are not filled. Simple as that. Because the only thing that satisfies our soul, Brother Isaac, is Jesus Christ. So the question is, how satisfied and how, and how built up is our soul? Because if you're not seeking after the thing of Jesus Christ, the only thing that could fulfill a soul, then something is lacking. We can't afford, my friends, nowadays, to be lacking Jesus Christ. Spend time with him and let him be the fuel that keeps us all going. Jesus Christ, the only thing that fulfills our eternity bound soul. And I thank God for that. I thank God for being a Christian. Because as Christian, we recognize a temporal 
satisfaction, a temporary satisfaction, a satisfaction that we've, we've gained and got recognized for. It's all good. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with a promotion on, on your job because it tells us that by being promoted, you got recognized for doing something good. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, none of those things last. So emphasis should not be, not be placed on them so long. Emphasis should not be placed on, on how good you think you look or how, or how much you are acquired in this life. Let us let see who you are through Jesus Christ. And when they see Jesus Christ in you, it, it, it changes your whole outlook. It changes your picture. It, it changes who you are. And I thank God for that. I, I want others to see Jesus Christ in me. Because when, when they see Jesus in me, they know that I'm a changed person. I don't have to say that I'm a Christian. I don't have to go about with, with, with a teacher saying Jesus is his child or God's son. I don't have to do that. My attitude and the way I carry myself and the way I conduct myself should automatically reveal to the world who Brother Ray is. Each one of us. And I'm going to bring it out again. If you're faking it, you can only fake it so long. The real you can come out in aisle, aisle seven and fosters when you get frustrated. The real you can come out one of these days. Ask God to help us that, that let our light so shine before men that, that we see nothing else but Jesus Christ. That they see nothing else but Jesus Christ through you. Since we claim to be children of God. And, and I'm happy to proclaim that I'm a child of God. We all are. Quite often we fall short because our soul is not being fed enough. So when our, when our souls are fed a lot and enough, our heart grows, our, our, our smiles become bigger, we're more like Jesus. And, and I must tell you, quite often, I, I was reading a, a stat just the other day, how the world is obese. I thought to myself, if Christians could be obese for Jesus Christ, If you could have the desire and appetite that we have for, for everything else for Jesus Christ, it, it's amazing what kind of Christian we could be. I, I'm talking to all of us, my friends, because we, we, we need more of Jesus. We can never get enough of Jesus. Here's my macaroni pudding. He's, he's everything that I like. So I, I want people to recognize that. I want people to be able to see Jesus in me. And that should be all of our determination. Let others see Jesus Christ in us. Shining. John 14 and 6 tells us. What does John 14 and 6 tell us? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So I thought to myself, the more I get of Jesus, the closer I'm going to get to my Father. Am I right? Because the closer we get to Jesus Christ, the closer we get to His Father, our Father. Jesus tells us that I am the way, the truth, and the life. We cannot come to the Father but through Jesus Christ. So let's get an appetite. A strong appetite for Jesus Christ. Let's get a strong appetite for the things that are worthwhile. The older we get, the more we need a strong appetite for the things that's worthwhile. Because the more we rely, the circle of life and success that I said is coming up. I'm knocking on 60. That means that who was 20 years ago, who was 60 is now 80 in the 80s and they're passing on. The full circle of life. That's how it works. My day will come too. Your day will come too. I'm not sit, standing here to frighten you, but that's the circle of life. We need to abundantly try our best to, or, or we need to try our best to live the most abundant life we can. And, and enjoy, as Brother Gene rightly said this morning, enjoy this, enjoy this journey. It, it's an it, it's a, it's a enjoyable road that we run. We've got to enjoy it. And I promise you, I promise you, none of us will meet, will meet our maximum capacity of enjoyment with Christ, we will never reach it. So that means we have a lot to work for and a lot to reach to. 
Always more. Always more, brother Isaac. Always more. Give me more of Jesus. I want more and more of Jesus. John 15 and 5 tells us, I am the vine. Ye, all of us, are the branches. Are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, praise the Lord, brother Isaac. For without me, we all can do nothing. So that tells us that we need Jesus. Even if sometimes we, we, we forget about him, even if sometimes we don't give him much attention we, as we should, we need Jesus. Because the Bible tells us we can do nothing without Jesus Christ. It, it tells us that my, we bring forth fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So we need Jesus, my friends. Jesus now, more than ever. More than ever. Because I must tell you, it seemed to have been much easier when I was growing up than it is now. But we need Jesus now, my friend, more than ever. But, but I'm here to encourage all of us that in 2023, we all can live for Jesus Christ. And we all can get more. Praise the Lord. This world is not going to stop until Jesus Christ comes. None of us have an idea when that is. I may be gone. You may be gone. But the world continues. I, I, I told my management staff just, just, just the other day, I said, you know, it, it's amazing how life is. Uh, God forbid if I passes, I don't want that black ribbon to be on that door for a day or two. And then continue on. Because life goes on. But life goes on. But I know for a fact, along this journey, we need to try to uh, enhance it, embrace it, but get more of Jesus. Get more of our good friend and brother, our Lord Jesus Christ. We can do nothing without God. And if we try, I'm here to tell you that you're going to fail. Not that you might fail, you're going to fail. Guaranteed to fail. If we try to do anything without Jesus Christ, we guarantee to fail. Because we need him. We need to acknowledge we need him. Isaiah 53, please. What does Isaiah 53 tell us? Isaiah 53 and 6, tell, and six tells us what? All we, every one of us, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So all of us, if you don't watch it, if you don't be careful, we can go astray. Don't ever think that you're so close to God you can't go astray. That's when Satan creeps in and says, well, yeah, you, you don't have to follow that narrow way anymore. You can't come on this broad way. You're a strong Christian. Those are the little tactics that Satan uses. He don't sleep. He's like a roaring lion, ready to devour whatever he can and, who he, and whoever he can. And let me tell you a secret, my friends. Satan has an appetite next to none. So if you think Satan don't like your type of meat, you make a sad mistake. Satan don't like you. Satan don't like every single one of us. He's never satisfied. He has tape worms. He has a garbage in his stomach. He will eat whatever he can. The Bible tells us that he's, he goes about like a, like a roaring lion. Ready to devour Anything that comes his way. Including you. So don't ever think that we're that close. That's why I'm trying to encourage us to get more of Jesus Christ. And the more of Jesus Christ we get, the closer to God we get, the further away from Satan we'll become. But Satan is still, don't forget that. He never leave you. He's always there. He's always there. We have to crave and have a great desire for the things of God. You know what a strong desire is? Going after something you really want. That's a strong craving desire. And quite often, we don't crave and desire the things that are beneficial to our soul like we should. 
Listen, I, I, I speak for that. We get caught up. We live in a cruel, we live in a world that we, we get so caught up. We do. Church, we do. But we got to make time. We have to make time. I, I was thinking just the other day, but that is that cannot communicate a lot about where we are in our garden, what we plant, what we don't plant, and I, uh, how, how the breadfruits are doing and this and that. But I, 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 like, I like to spend my early mornings through my garden looking at the size of my, my breadfruits and my mangoes and, uh, and, and, and all that I have. And I say, Lord, thank you. Because to see something grow when it's after the rain and new leaves come out, new buds come out, and then something blossoms and then there's a fruit, I say, Lord, thank you. I, I, it's almost my little Garden of Eden when I'm walking through there in the mornings. So, so church, I don't, want us to, I don't want us to get too traditional. And, and maybe I shouldn't touch on this tonight, but we've we, we got to watch how, how we, we, we think that this whole traditional thing of, of what we're doing, if you don't get in a little closet, in a little dark corner, Sister Mijayan, and, and, and you kneel down and you can't, you can't see your face in front. I'm saying in the mornings when I communicate with God, it's in my garden. We can communicate with God anywhere. Not because Papa said that, that the only place in praise is in a, little, in a little dark closet. Let's communicate with God anywhere. Enjoy this journey. I enjoy the early mornings walking around with my, with, with my dogs and my plants. And I love that. Because I say, Lord, thank you. Follow this. Then it rains. Then the sun shines. Then everything grows. What God's plan? We, we, we can't outdo God's plan. I'm saying wherever you are, you could be close to God. Be connected to God. Matthew 14. Matthew 14, 13. We'll go down a few verses. This is when Jesus fed the 5,000. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by ship into a, de- into a desert, placed apart. And when the people had heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of the city. Now, now the Bible really don't tell us whether they follow him for salvation, but the always are they following for more fish and, and, and fritters. We, we don't know, but they followed him. Some, sometimes, sometimes people follow, follow people for, and, 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 and for the wrong reasons, you know. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. Praise the Lord. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a desert place and the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the village and buy themselves Rituals, but Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. Praise the Lord. Well, Jesus is a great provider. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fish. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down. Now that's a man with confidence. He knew exactly what he was going to do. Before that happened. He knew it. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And took the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven. He blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples. And the disciples to the multitudes. And they all ate. And they, and they all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained 12 baskets full. And they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. I promise you it was at least another half of that. So we're talking about at least, at least 78,000 people. And they had baskets full, Brother Isaac, left over. What a miracle. What a great God. God will provide no matter what. This was a deserted place. This was a place where people probably didn't desire. Because it, it was a desert. He said, but the, the disciples remi- reminded him. Quite often the Lord, I think, I, I think he, he made a point to make sure that they knew that a miracle could be in any place. 
Henceforth, I, I think some places is Rwanda, he went, he, he wanted to demonstrate that no matter where I am, a miracle can take place and happen. His disciples were only seeing what they were seeing. Quite often, we only see what we see. We need to look beyond that. Jesus Christ is almighty. God is the creator of all things. He is unlimited if only we have faith. He goes beyond what we see. He went beyond what the disciples seen. He said, Lord, send them away. Come we only got, we only got but a, a, a morsel of food. He says, okay, I'll make it work. I'll make it work. Trust Jesus. Trust God. Skip down to verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitude away. So you see, Jesus was ready to send the multitude away. He by fed them first. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, we're not designed to go away till we get fed. Praise the Lord. We were fed this morning. And now we're being fed again. Yes. Our souls are being fed. Yes. To the satisfaction where it needs to be. We need to make sure that our souls are satisfied. Yes. And we can only do that through God's word and through God. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. In other words, it was getting dark. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea. Tossed with waves from the wind, for the wind was contrary. And in the and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. He knew exactly what he was going to do. You know, that was another miracle he was preparing to do. But it, it's how it's amazing how he, he he preached, he healed, he fed, he he told them all goodbye, told his disciples to go their way, but then he went to pray. Praise the Lord. So no matter what happened to us, we still have to stay connected to God. He, he didn't forget that it was, it, was, it was time to pray. And there's no doubt in my mind he did it on purpose. He, he, waited, till, he waited till night. Probably saying to himself, I wonder, my, what, I wonder what my disciples can say now. I told them earlier in the day on this deserted place that we were going to feed these people. But we don't have no food, Lord. I'll, I'll, I'll make it work. It's okay. Sometimes I, I tell people all the time, when God go before us, we're good. The problem is, is that we've got to make God always go before us. God knows what's before us. Because he's already gone ahead. I said that last Sunday night too. God is already ahead of us. He knows what's best for us, Brother Horace. He knows. He surely knows. Where my brother Isaac? And the ship was now in the midst of the sea. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, Is it a spirit? And they cried out for fear. Now it's amazing, they disciples of Jesus Christ, and then I thought it might have been Jesus Christ. Ah, Sister Rhonda, we're human. The minute we take our eyes off and our mind off of Jesus Christ, sometimes we see him and don't see him. The disciples should have known that was their Jesus Christ coming to them and their, and their friend. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Praise the Lord. Be not afraid. I'm here to tell you tonight, be not afraid. Calm now. It's all good. Jesus Christ has gone before us. God has gone before us to prepare a place for us. Because he knows best. He always knows what's best for us. We quite often travel down roads that we shouldn't travel anyway. Henceforth we get lost. But Jesus is always there with his GPS to put us right back on the right path. We want you to take our eyes off of Jesus Christ. It's not the getting lost part that's bad, brother Isaac. It's the getting back on the right track. We gotta get back on the right track and realize that we're lost. We realize that we've done something wrong as humans. Get back on track. We 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 like the disciples. We look across the this this they're seeing the seas, they didn't see Jesus. They, they, they're seeing the treacherous winds, they didn't see Jesus. But Jesus controls them anyway. And he's their boss. But they lost focus. But Jesus says, Look, oh, it's all good. 
I put you through another test. And I'm sorry to say, but you failed. But be of good cheer. I'm here again. Praise the Lord. We as human beings will always fail. Something will go away. Once we depend on ourselves. But with Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Because he's our captain. And when, 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 he's, a, when he's our captain and he's in control, I promise you, the bumps will be nothing. You'll go through a few shakes. But the shakes can't last forever. You'll go through some dark nights. But the dark nights can't last forever. You'll go through some troubles, Brother Horace. But they can't last forever. You'll go through some valleys, my friends. But they can't last forever. Nothing lasts forever. Dark is the night. Morning is coming. Right at the storm. Jesus is coming. Praise the Lord. Let us be encouraged to know that no matter what happens to us in life, Jesus is always there. Brother Ray, you don't know the troubles. They too will pass. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. So no matter how deep our valleys are, nothing will last forever. He's grooming us, making us realize. I tell people all the time, quite often when you're in a valley, it's the only time you recognize how beautiful the mountain is. Because when you're up there soaring on a mountain top, you're smiling and everything looks good. Most of us don't even look back long at the valley, you know. But boy, when he threw us down, I would like to be thrown down on my back because when I look up and see what God has created, I see the mountain. I see the mountain top. So give God thanks for all things. Paul rejoiced in all his afflictions. And even then, he came out like a shining star because he, he kept his eyes on God. He kept his eyes focused on what he needed to be focused on. Our eternity bound soul is headed to heaven. Heaven is a holy place though. Filled with glory and with grace. Sin can never enter there. I, I, I thank God for Jesus Christ tonight. I, I thank God for my friend Jesus that they were able to, they were able to focus on him, that we were able to gain from him. But we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. Keep our souls fed, church, that we one day can hear, well done. Well done. Because Brother James read a scripture this morning that the hard-headed goat will be will be on the left and the sheep will be on the right. In other words, you don't want to hear depart from me, I know you're not. Stay connected with God. Feed our souls. Feed our souls and we too will be okay. Let us stand. We're going to sing. I surrender all. Quite often we lack things because we're not fully and totally surrendered to God. I have that testimony all the time. You hear Brother Ray say, I walked in shallow water, but I was still a Christian. Of course I was still a Christian. But I was a shallow water Christian. When you surrender all to God, everything you have to God, it's amazing what God will do in your life. A more enjoyable life becomes when you surrender all. Let us sing. Holy Spirit.
spirit truly we know that thou art mine i surrender i surrender all i surrender i surrender all all to thee my blessed savior i surrender We thank God for meeting with us once again and thank Brother Ray for another wonderful message that we look deep within our hearts, check our walk, that we are walking circumspectly, not as fools but as wise, redeeming the time because these days are indeed evil, yes, and we want to know that we make it in. So we thank God for that, Brother Ray. Thank you very much for your message. And thank you, the audience, for being attentive. And for those online, we pray that the message went home and some soul somewhere will be saved by what he said tonight. I'm going to ask Brother, Brother Edie to come up and close off in prayer for Let us pray. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Lord, it's a privilege to carry everything to you in prayer. Lord, we thank you for the friendship. We thank you there, Lord, for the adoption that we have, that we also are joint heirs with you. We thank you there, Lord, for this blessed opportunity that you have given us that we can be a part of your kingdom. We pray, dear Lord, that you will help us as we traverse our, this earth, dear Lord, that we will keep ourselves close to you. Help us always to abide in you, dear Lord, because you said if we do not abide in you, we are going to be thrown aside and be cast away. So, Lord, I thank you tonight for this message. Thank you, dear Lord, for the friend that we have in you. Dear Jesus, we pray that you'll bless us now as we go our way. Be with us this week, dear Lord, and help us, dear Lord, that we will let our light shine so others will see Christ in us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.